Okay, welcome back to the channel. We're going to do a little bit of maintenance. We'll do it on this little, little Dell. It is a, oop, yeah, it's upside down. It's a Dell Opteron. Back it up to run 3020. So let me uh, point the camera down. <laughs> Thumb screws on the back. Just undo them. That comes off. Oh, it's pretty dirty in here. vacuum cleaner and we'll get started I'll save you from uh, experiencing the vacuum okay so what we're gonna get what I'm gonna do is use the the uh, crevice tool to get inside and underneath uh, the different crevices of the case and I'm using a vacuum instead of blowing everything out because I'm wanting to do this inside the house and not take it outside. You could use canned air or something like that, but all you're gonna do is take all the dust and just blow it out of the system and it's gonna get everywhere. Now, on a lot of it's, you know, can fall right back into the computer that you're cleaning. So in this case, I'm just using a vacuum cleaner so that I'm just sucking up all the dirt and the dust and taking it away. Now I'm removing, going to remove the uh, hard drive tray uh, to be able to get to more of the motherboard. And it's just a matter of unplugging, pulling a tab, unplugging the power and the SATA cable to the hard drive and everything just, and it just comes right out. Now I can get down into the chips and you don't want to get the nozzle directly onto the motherboard or the chip I, you could do that but just make sure you don't bang something and you because you could potentially knock something loose so i'm just floating it over the motherboard uh, and it's pulling up all the dust and dirt now we're going to clean the fan just by running it over the blades and the fan the device is preventing the nozzle from spinning the blades on the fan Now I'm going to pop out the memory so that uh, I can remove it and get to the, the sockets. There isn't an issue with uh, not doing this, but it's what I'm choosing to do anyway, just so I can clean up the sockets and make sure there's no dust on the inside. And it's a good idea to do. So next... Uh, we're going to take off the heat sink from the processor and it's held on uh, by four screws. Uh, again, you always want to use the right uh, screw end for the processor for, for removing the screw. It just prevents, helps to prevent you from uh, stripping out the screw, the screw head then it makes it a lot harder to remove or tighten up later. And there's really no particular uh, pattern that you have to use for removing it, but I usually just do the star pattern. Now that little housing just held on with two, you know, just a retainer 
tabs. Just widen it and it just comes, lifts up, comes right out. And what that does is it focuses the air to, for the fan to bring in air and being forced through the, uh, the fins of the heat sink. Now removing the last of the screws, I'm going to take the, oop, looks like I uh, didn't have them all the way undone. But we want to make sure they're all loose and uh, ready to take off the heat sink. Now what's happened here is you can see that the thermal paste has turned into thermal glue in effect. It, it's dried out. So now we're going to have to replace the the thermal, we're gonna have to take the processor out. And that's done with uh, one arm that releases the, the uh, socket cage and allows you to just pull the CPU out. Now you just pull it straight up and out. Now we use some isopropyl alcohol to help remove the, uh, remove the thermal compound from the heat sink. You need to get all of it off so that when you put everything back together, there isn't any residue or anything left from the old thermal compound or thermal paste. Um, and you want to do this uh, at least once a year. Uh, take your system, open it up, take the uh, heat sink off the processor, take the processor out, take off all the thermal paste uh, so it, it doesn't end up like this, which is in effect thermal glue because uh, it will deteriorate over time. It just solidifies, it dries out, and then it makes it that much harder for the heat. The, the processor is going to run hotter is what's going to happen. Um, there's a ton of dust that builds up inside the computer. It will slow it down slightly, uh, but it is designed to be cooled. There's fans in the systems that are that pass air through the components to cool the system. When you get dust, dirt built up into the system, you need to clean it up. You need to clean it out, and you should do that every year. Now this poor system that I'm doing this for it hasn't been done in about three years, and it was pretty pretty bad. The thermal paste was just came off in in flakes in chunks, and you want to get all of that off of all of the uh, you want to get the thermal paste off the processor off the heat sink. Uh, put fresh on you want to get the dust and dirt that builds up on the motherboard and off the heat sink so that it keeps everything cool as the air passes through and you just want to make sure that you line up you want to put the processor back the way you took it off and there's typically an arrow on an end which indicates there's an arrow on the end of the processor and there's an arrow on the socket and you just match those up and it just literally sets inside now I've uh, again you want to be thorough and it's going to take some, a little bit of elbow grease to make sure that you get everything off of that all the old stuff off the processor and then line up the arrows and put the processor back onto the socket Put the retaining socket retainer down and may, and lower the retaining arm into place so that everything is nice and secure. Again, it doesn't hurt to make sure you have every all this stuff off and just use some isopropyl alcohol to remove it. But make sure you got all of it off of the heat sink as well as the processor. Now that all that's off, we're ready to apply new thermal compound or thermal paste. 
and all you need to do, it's different for every processor. The bigger the processor, they typically come with a wonderful thing called a manual and it'll tell you how to apply it. With these processors, it just requires a pea size bit of thermal paste that you put into the middle of the processor so that when you put the heat sink on it, it's, it smushes it out relatively evenly. And you, if you're generous and you do, you know, like a, bee, a big pea or a small grain of rice size, you can use a little bit too much. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to destroy your equipment. And as long as it's not, as long as it's not thermally, as long as it's not conductive, it's just going to make a bit of a mess. And if you use a little bit too much, it's fine. But that scenario is much better than not using enough. So you don't want to use way too much, but you definitely do not want to use not enough because that is the job of thermal compound or thermal paste is to get into the cracks and crevices of uh, between the processor and the heat sink. It fills those gaps uh, and allows the heat to transfer from the processor to the heat sink. Now when you're putting the heat sink back on, you want to do a star pattern. You want to do one corner, another opposite, opposite corner, the opposite corner, and then and you want to keep doing that. I generally do about five to ten turns and then just move on to the next. There's some people will say, oh, well, you half a turn. Well, you'll be going to be there for two hours if you do half a turn. And what, But what you're doing is you're more evenly spreading out the thermal compound. And you want to make sure you do that to all four sides as you go along. And you just, you know, start out with 10 and move to five and everything, you know, as you get further and further down, make sure that it just needs to be tight. It doesn't need to be like wrenched on. Now we're going to replace the, uh, the fan shroud, which again, as the fan spins, it brings the air to the fan. It's like it creates it like a jet to bring the air to the processor so that it uh, spreads the air down and cools the processor. Now we're just going to put our memory back in, just line it up, there's a notch, line it up with the notch and you want to put even pressure at the top and bottom of the ram till it clicks. And you want to do that with however memory sticks, however many sticks of memory you have. Now we also want to put it back in the or orientation that it came out. So if you have, if you have four sticks of memory and four slots, put them back the way you found, the way you took them out. If you have four slots, and two sticks of memory make sure you consult your manual or just take them out and put them back in the way they were with this system there's only two sticks of memory there's only two slots they're both the same memory so it didn't matter which order it was put in they're both the same just put them back in and now we're going to use the crevice tool get into more of the cracks and crevices of the board just to make sure, you know, move, I'm moving the cables there, moving them out of the way, just so I can get into the corners. Now I'm putting that on the fan just to, to suck in some of the dust and dirt that the fan pulls in. And 
and it will clean that up nicely. And once you're done, you need to put everything back just, uh, just the way you found it. And take the hard, the hard drive container. And the way this works is it's not hop swappable. That tray that surrounds the hard drive, you would, if you wanted to replace the hard drive, you just pull that off, put the new hard drive in, and then slide it right back into the cage. What's really cool is that uh, it all just comes apart and it's very, easy, it's very easily done. You don't have to unscrew it every time, something and screw it back in. You just remove the cage, put your hard drive, new hard drive in, put the cage back, you know, into the cage and slide into the enclosure and it just clicks right back onto the, into the system. And in this case, we're going to reconnect the power and the uh, SATA cable onto the hard drive, goes back into place, just pull the, the tab, and that locks it into place. That cover is for an optional CD-ROM that just holds that into place. Now we got everything done, everything's cleaned up, processor's gonna run better because it's gonna keep cooler, and everything is now in place. With those, with the, with the power, the spare power and SATA connector, you just want to make sure that they're out of the way. And thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.